So we're here at Scott's 500 gallon coral reef tank and before we get started we've got an announcement to make. Welcome to LA Fish Guys Aquarium Tech Talk, a new series that will parallel LA Fish Guys. We're going to discuss different aquarium related technologies, how to's, and product reviews. The goal of this series is to make your aquarium keeping experience more efficient while giving you the tools to solve problems and ultimately with the goal of having a healthier aquarium. Fish Guys Aquarium Tech Talk. Today we're going to discuss a problem. Hi, I'm Jim. What's your name? <laughs> My name is Scott. Hi, Scott. Welcome to LA Fish Guys Aquarium Tech Talk. Today we're going to discuss a problem that plagues all of us that have acrylic aquariums. Scratches. Oh, I love putting scratches in people's tanks. <laughs> He's very good at it. I do a good job at it, too. Indeed. Lots of experience and practice. Well, 20 years worth of uh, keeping this particular aquarium and uh, many of the years I had a lot of sand in there, I've accumulated a lot of scratches. Some of them I did. Uh, you probably saw the last LA Fish Guys episode where uh, we had Condi over here removing all the coralline um, from the viewing panes, years worth. And, uh, and of course that certainly reveals the scratches that have accumulated over the years. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to work on eliminating those and I'm going to give you the tools to tackling that chore on your own. Um, now there's a number of ways to approach this. Well really there's really not a number of ways. There's two ways to approach this. The first way and it's the way that you know people really only um, consider is the dry method. Drain your tank, sand it all out, polish and buff it. Um, it's a very good way and if you've got a used aquarium um, that you're setting up it's very easy to do. You get your different Takes grades. a lot of elbow grease though. It certainly does. You take uh, a lot of different layers of sandpaper much the same way we're going to do it today uh, with the addition of buffing it out and you know to polish out in a, a dry aquarium you basically treat it like a automotive clear coat paint. There's products like Novus 1, Novus 2 that you can use as an electric wheel and polish it out but today we're going to be tackling scratches in the tank. So do I get to put a buffer in the tank? A yeah. buffing wheel? No, no buffing wheels today Jim. Uh -huh. We're going to sand it out, and it's not for the faint of heart, but it works. So, what I've done is I've accumulated a stack of pads that I've put together. Um, now, there's companies that actually make these uh, Mighty Magnet, which is the magnets that I use. These are heavy duty magnets. Um, they work very well in my one and a half inch aquarium. They have a polishing kit, um, which is similar to what I'm doing here. Essentially, it's got different grades of sandpaper glued the pads that stick to the velcro side of the mat and uh, what I've done is I've got this stuff called micro mesh and it's a popular um, sandpaper used in the aircraft industry among other things and what differentiates it from your basic wet dry sandpaper this is automotive grade sandpaper is that the micro mesh it has a uh, vinyl backing on it so it's not gonna you know come apart in the water after long use and what I've done is I've taken a whole array of different pads. Um, these ones happen to be just regular automotive grade sandpaper, but the micro mesh comes in a range from 1500 all the way up to 12,000. And what I've done is got 1500 here and siliconed it to my pad. Same with 1800, 2400, 3200, 3600, 4000, 6000, 12,000, no, yeah, 12,000, and uh, 8,000. Not in that order, of course. Um, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to start out on the heavier scratches. We're going to use a heavier grade sandpaper. I'll probably go down to either 600 or, depending if it's a real deep scratch, even 400. And we're going to work our way up one step at a time. And trust me when I tell you, like I said before, it's not for the faint of heart. It's going to get better before it gets worse. But the end result... Better before it gets worse, it's going to look worse before it gets better. Yeah, that, what he said. Um, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Um, but the end result is quite shocking. So stay tuned as we uh, move this operation over to the fish tank and we tackle some unsightly scratches.
So we'll start off first and show you some of the scuffs and scratches that uh, are in the tank or that maybe I've put in the tank. You can see a nice big long one there. And scuffs here along the bottom. That whole length down along there. Okay, so. Now, we're going to assume that you're doing this alone. This, you know, when you put your magnet cleaners in with the sandpaper, you do not want to start at the top and drag it down. That's a big no-no. So, assuming you're working alone and you don't have this little lip here like I do, you know, what you could do is tape the magnet to the glass if you can. Um, this is crappy tape, but you kind of get the idea Duct there. tape, maybe? Duct tape would work as well. Um, in my case, I've got a little lip, lip here, so I really don't need to worry about that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start out. Don't give me any lip. We're going to start out with the serious stuff. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I don't know how well this is going to work simply because I don't have it glued on like I normally do. So hopefully this will work well. Let me grab my magnet. You know, when I say work well, I mean hopefully this will stay on the magnet. Otherwise we may end up having to reshoot this here. I don't have a real warm and fuzzy about this stuff staying on very well. Especially if I try to jump a corner. But we're going to find out. So the other stuff I've got it all, you know, kind of glued on. Whereas this one I don't. Okay, so we've got our 400 grit there. This is serious stuff. I'm going to go up, use my little tongs. Shall I hold that for you? Sure, you can hold that for me. Maybe I'll even just move it away as you try to get that. close no, to it. No, don't do that. Alright, so I got a little arrow on here. Turn that side as which. No, 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 no. Pull the magnet away. Pull the magnet away. Do you want to stir things up in your tank? Create some rock and roll? Make your corals do the hula hula? Internal circulation is the movement of water within the tank. Increasing water flow inside the tank helps flush and sweep up debris. It entices corals to open fuller with greater polyp extension. Fish respond naturally and move gracefully in the variable currents. Jibo Wave Maker Pumps can do this. Four models, inexpensive to obtain, easy to install, internal pumps magnetically grasp the sides of your tank, and each or all units have five effect settings along with separate speed and power controls. Or check out the advanced LED systems at affordable prices. Reef Breeders has a two-year warranty on lights along with DC pumps, dosing pumps, and protein skimmers. That's reefbreeders.com. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. Do you have an aquarium question? Are you looking for aquatic answers? Just key in wetwebmedia.com. Wet Web Media has information on freshwater, marine, brackish, and planted aquariums. Wet Web Media is staffed by the capable 
Wet Web Media crew. Check today's facts, ask questions, or search keywords. That's wetwebmedia.com. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, because if we start there and you pull that thing down, I'm going to have a nasty scratch all the way down that panel. Oh, shucks. So the point is, when you put that sandpaper in there, it better be in the exact spot you want to start in. Yep. Now, one thing you can do to move this so you're a little bit, you know, safer is to keep pressure off of it by... There we go. By pulling the magnet away from the glass. So, essentially, we've got to work this panel here. And, and what we need to do is each step, you know, we want to feather it in. So each step, you're going to go a little bit further out. Um, so if I work, say, two inches with the 400, the next step up I might work three inches, next step up I might work four inches, and so on and so forth. So we're kind of feathering it out. Uh, in this case, you know, I've got a pretty wide swath to work, and you'll see immediately that it's really hazing the, the acrylic. They said it will get worse before it gets better, although I like my first statement, it will get better before it gets worse. Um, this is not for the paint apart. So we're working, we're intersecting the pattern that we did before. So if I go horizontal on the first couple passes, I'm going to go vertical. I'll remove more. Just kind of pay attention to what I'm sanding. And I don't need to put more work into it than is needed. So if you go around the other side here and you look down the side, you can really see you know, what I've done, and as I said, it's not for the faint of heart. I'm going to go up high here because there's some bigger scratches in this area. Now, if you have sand in your tank, you kind of got to be careful and you can pull it away a little bit, let the magnet float up and the sand will fall out. You really got to be cognizant of that because you can very quickly create more scratches. Zorro! Yeah. This It'll is, be Zorro before you even realize it. This is what I was talking about, about this uh, sandpaper just being wedged in there. It's obviously much better if it's glued in. And you should also rinse your paper and stuff before you put it in the tank, which I did earlier. But you can see the acrylic kind of coming off there. Now if you look, you can see you know what we've done in there. And actually there's still some area here that I really should have worked there, but I think we're good for now. Next step is to go to the uh, 600. We did 400, now we're going to go 600. Let me hold that magnet in there. Yeah. But I can't move it. Yeah. Or we got to keep it down at the bottom. That's right. Okay, so don't move it, Jim. Let him do all the work. And which way is the uh, Mighty Magnet label? Away. Okay, so let's go this way. So we're going to get this down as low as possible. Don't move the magnet, Jim. Don't get yelled at again. <gasps> That's the 600 grit sandpaper. So 
He's going to take all that scuffing work that he's done and he's going to try to scuff it a, le a bit less. Yep, and basically if you can see I kind of got a line there, we'll work this layer out a little bit above it. Um, start this direction and you, know, you can real quickly, you know, should be able to see here pretty quickly that you know, if you, it's taking it down. Well, it still looks pretty scuffed to me. Yep, it's going to look that way for a little bit. We'll work this one layer at a time. Oops. Yeah, she was afraid of just what I was afraid of. Should have glued those pads. I did not think I would need to get so. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next part and we'll keep moving forward.